Every child born on earth has a spirit given by God and is without sin. When that child grows to the age of adolescence and begins to know right from wrong, they come under the influence of the evil one, Satan, who is prince of darkness and the enemy of God and his son. God and his son want only good for you. God's desire is for mankind to receive the greatest gift of all, to be with him in a place of peace, happiness, and joy forever, a place called heaven. However, Satan is determined to keep us separated from God, and so he influences mankind to sin, that is, to violate God's law. Before mankind was even created, God the Father knew that sin was going to be a problem, and so God prepared a plan that could save all men from Satan. God had his son, Jesus, establish his kingdom on earth and in heaven. To accomplish this, Jesus gave up all that he had with his Father in heaven to come to the earth and to live as a man. On earth, Jesus exposed himself to the temptation of Satan, who sought to destroy him. Satan did all he could to find and kill Jesus as a human. When Jesus grew to be a man, Satan did all that he could to tempt Jesus to sin. The enemy of God failed, and Jesus lived the perfect life as an example to us all. God the Heavenly Father was willing to accept a sacrifice for mankind's sins, and that sacrifice could only be made by the sinless Son of God. Jesus allowed himself to be put to death by evil men when he allowed men to nail him to a wooden cross and left him to hang until he died. But God raised his Son from the dead. Jesus appeared alive to his followers and to many others before going up into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father where he was given all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus overcame death so that we may overcome sin through him. The Son of God established a kingdom of his followers, his church. Those who make up his church worship the Father and serve him. The greatest desire of Jesus and his followers is for people to enter his kingdom. Only those who are in the kingdom, his church, will be saved from their sins. Now you understand what God has revealed to us, that all of mankind has disobeyed his law, and that we are all in need of a Savior. No human could ever earn or deserve the right for their spirit to return to the Heavenly Father who gave it. And yet, God demonstrated his great care for us in that while we were sinners, his Son Jesus died as a sacrifice for us. God has extended salvation to all men who will put on Christ and obey his teaching. God's word shows us that the church, which is his kingdom, belongs to Christ and is made up of those who are faithful to him. We are acceptable to God through his unfailing grace and our faithful obedience to the gospel. God's wonderful, amazing grace is for all. However, his grace will not save us if we do not obey him. If we obey God's plan of salvation, we will be added to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. God's amazing grace of salvation is only available to those who are in his son's kingdom. Are you in that kingdom, Jesus' church? Do you really have God's grace? Let's see exactly what Jesus says you must do to be in that kingdom. Jesus said you must hear the teaching of God concerning salvation. Jesus said you must believe in him as God's Son and your Savior. Jesus said you must repent of your sins and change the sinful ways of your life. Jesus said you must confess him before others. Jesus said you must be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Jesus said you must serve in his kingdom faithfully, living and worshiping in spirit and in truth. May God bless you in your search for His grace.